China, largely better than expected. We saw copper up off the back of it. Yeah, we saw our miners in particular hit hard. I think a key thing is that the US market had been closed for two days and then reopened with a flat performance and in that time the Australian market has actually performed quite well up by 1% beating a lot of the markets around the region and of course after the flat performance from the U US we seem to see a bit of a rebalancing effect so the market down by 1.3% in fact if we ha have a look at the close now we've seen the lowest close for the Australian market in four weeks 4.4 billion dollars worth of stock being traded but that's not surprising given that we have seen the US coming back online so institutional investors being active again if we do have a look around the market though it was every single sector being sold off the property sector ended up being the best but it was still down by 0.6 percent and in fact every other sector lost at least one percent or even greater than one percent today so it was a broad-based sell-off for every three stocks that rose today we saw six stocks falling and in the top 20 blue chips every single stock was lower today the worst being a bank and the best being a bank as well. The worst was NAB, which was down by 3%. The best was ANZ, which was only down by half a percent. In fact, if we have a look at the top 200, there weren't a lot of gainers, but one of the gainers was Crown. Now, Crown's up by 2.7%, and this is one of the themes that we've seen in the last few sessions, where we've seen the selling of Echo Entertainment and the buying of Crown. That continued in today's week's session. But of course, the worst performer in the top 200 was Arium, with a, a fall of 12.7%. But all up, the China PMI numbers didn't really dent the markets, really coming in on expectations. The expectation was for a read of 50.3. We saw a reading of 50.2. We also saw a PMI read from South Korea, and we saw an improvement there to 47.4 uh, from 45.7 in the month of September. So altogether, not an impressive day on the Australian market, and unfortunately, the weakest close that we've seen in four weeks. And Julia, I suppose Michael posed the question that, you know, now what now? Do we continue to see this selling? Or maybe do we see a little bit of uh, buying kick in your best uh, guess if we have a look at the market weakness I mean you can see the intraday graph behind me and you can see that we've closed on the lows of the session so that really doesn't bode well for tomorrow's session but it does look like we are following those leads from the US and while we do follow the Chinese market uh, during the day quite closely this was a day when we actually saw the Shanghai composite gaining ground mm. and yet the Australian market sold off quite severely so we will be watching that US session tonight it should be an interesting one that we saw the consumer confidence numbers being deferred to uh, tonight so we'll be watching that read very closely. And of course, the big event that all markets around the globe will be watching on Friday are the U.S. non-farm payroll numbers. If we do see a better than expected jobs number coming out in the U.S., perhaps that could give the uh, stock market a bit of momentum. But next week is a big risk uh, week as well. We see the RBA rates meeting, uh, but really the markets are going to be watching that U.S. presidential election on Tuesday. Your thoughts, Patrick? And do you have confidence in its ability either to, to whether the storm stand alone or potentially other interested parties? I think um, Atlas Iron makes a more attractive takeover target than uh Arium. If we have a look mm. at Arium, it's a high cost producer. There's a lot of debt on its books, about $2 billion worth of debt. It's trying to shift from that manufacturing space, steel manufacturing, into the iron ore space, but it's still a very high cost producer. We've now seen, seen this consortium walking away from the table, but having said that, overall, it's been a good experience for Arium shareholders. <laughs> Before that bid was on the table, Arium shares were at 54 and a half cents. During the bid, they rose to about 78 and a half cents, and today we've seen a shares pull back but not to the pre-bid levels we've seen the shares pull back 10 cents to 68 and a half cents but they're still quite elevated compared to the 54 and a half cents of course in that time as Michael mentions we have seen iron ore prices rising and Arium has shipped its first ore from one of its projects but still high cost a lot of debt on its books I guess the pro in the favor in the company's favor is that we have seen iron ore prices stabilizing and rising once again but that's the same of all iron ore miners listed on the ASX yep stay out of the headlines at the moment uh, large transaction for petrol apparently uh, selling down its stake or selling off its stake Ten had a good news story today and a bad news story today. On the good news side, we saw that iCorp transaction looking like it's going to be done, but at a smaller price, a 22% discount from the first price I talked about with O-Media on the 20th of July. But on the other hand, a large parcel of shares being uh, be going through the market, 7.8% with Perpetual offloading its stake. And essentially, Perpetual had a 15% stake a couple of weeks ago, and now it's offloaded that to zero. So that large selling pressure, putting 
some downward pressure on Tens share price, down by 3.6% at just 27 cents. Um, so that's not very far from its all-time record low, which was at 26 and a half cents. So not a good day for Ten, despite the good news announcement that it does look like that I Corp sale will be done, um, and, and that those proceeds, of course, used to pay off debt and uh, reducing uh, the probability that we're going to see a capital raising by Ten.